each and every one of them here. If you've got your Bibles with me this morning, I'd like to have you go to John in chapter 1. John in chapter 1. And Jess, if I can get you to drop that screen for me. Yeah, thank you, sir. John in chapter 1. If you'd stand with me in reverence to the Word of God, if you don't have a Bible, there, there's one in the, the pew in front of you there. We've got those available for you, and so uh, please use that. I'm going to be looking at a lot of Scripture today. We'll be using the PowerPoint a little bit here, and I want to be a help to you. So John in chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And here we're taught that Christ always was, always is, and always shall be. And praise the Lord for that. He's the ever-existent one. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Lord, I come to you today and I thank you for your scripture, Lord. I thank you for the truth that I hold in my hands. Lord, this is not truth on, based on someone's perspective or opinion, but Father, this is absolute truth based on the God of eternity. And I'm so thankful that, Father, I have something today that I can bank my life on, I can bank my forever on. And Lord, my prayer would be first and foremost for anyone here today without the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as a part of their life, that today they'd come to that point where they'd realize that they're without a Savior, they're in need, uh, Lord of Jesus, and that they would accept him and that they would gain salvation because of it. But Father, I also pray for the Christians in this room. We have a calling, we have a purpose in our life. And I pray that, Father, as children of God, that we would seek to accomplish the will of God in our lives. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The title of the message this morning is He Came Unto His Own. He Came Unto His Own. You've heard the, the Christmas saying or slogan concerning the Magi that wise men still seek him, and that is true. But truth be told, Jesus came to seek us. In 1 John in chapter 4, it says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not God knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 9 of 1 John 4 says, And this was manifest of the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, the Bible says in John in chapter 1 that he came unto his own. He came unto his own. You see, he came seeking us. We sometimes in our vanity or in our arrogance, we, we feel like that, that we are the ones who are doing the work. But friend, I'll tell you this, it's, it's all of Christ or it's all for naught. Please understand the importance of that. In Romans in chapter number 5, the Bible says this, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you understand that while we were in our sinful, lost, condemned state, and please can I get your attention, I'd sure appreciate that, uh, but, but God sent his only begotten son, and he did that while we were undeserving. Don't think for a moment that you're seeking God. God sought you first. The Bible says in John in chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so what? loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, he came unto his own. But if you look at that verse in John, in John in chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 11, it says he came unto his own, and his own, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. 
that statement um, has caused me a lot of thought this week. It's teaching Wednesday night on the birth of Christ. And I understand that the context of this is, is the life of Christ in general, but you understand that when Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary had gone to Bethlehem because they were of the house and lineage of David. Luke chapter 2 teaches us that. And when they got to Bethlehem, there was family there. I don't know if his grandparents, I don't know if his uncles and aunts, I don't know if his cousins, I, I don't know if his brothers, I don't know who was there that was Joseph's family, but that's where he was from. And when he came unto his own, do you understand? Joseph and Mary, they came to their own family, and their own family said, we have no room for you, go to the inn. And when they got to the inn, the inn said, we have no room for you, and our Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, was born in a manger. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Friend, Christ came to seek us. He came unto us. I want to give you some thoughts this morning based on this passage of Scripture, and I hope it will be a help to you. But number one, to the lost, he comes as the Savior. To the lost, he comes as the Savior. (laughs) I love verse 12. One of my favorite passages of Scripture, I've committed the first 14 verses of this chapter to memory. And friend, it says, but as many as received him to what? To them gave he power to become the what? Sons of God, even to them that believe on it. Isn't it wonderful? You see, to the lost, he came as the Savior. Friend, I was lost and dead in my sin. I was condemned to an eternity in hellfire because I deserved it. I should split hell wide open. That is my just recompense for my sinful deeds. And God forbid that we ever forget that. Shame on us if we come to a point in our lives where we feel we are good enough to please God. Friend, you were never good enough in your flesh and you'll never be good enough in your flesh to please a holy God. God sent his only begotten son that you might be saved. You see, to the lost person in this room today, to the lost person in our town today, to the lost person in our world today, he comes as a Savior. He came unto his own. Jesus came unto the Jews, and he said, I am the Christ. I am the Messiah. I am the anointed one. I am the one that can bring salvation. And friend, I would ask you today, have you received him? Have you received him as your Savior? You say, oh, I, I, I've grown up around religion. I, I went to church as a child. I've heard this ever since I was little. I, I grew up in junior church. But friend, have you received him? You see, the, the Jews had also heard this since they were children. They had grown up in the synagogues, and they had heard the priests teach about the, the Messiah that would one day come, the prophesied one. And Jesus came, and he presented himself to them. And they received him not. They said, we don't want you. And friend, listen to me today. I don't know the heart. Only our holy God does. And I would ask you, have you received him? Have you received him? He came unto his own. You know, there might be a Christian young person in this room. They're Christian on the outside, but they're lost on the inside. They know how to play the game. They know how to look the part. But inside, they're they're full of dead men's bones. They're condemned. Young person, you've grown up in church because you have godly parents. But godly parents do not make you a child of God. See, the Jews said, we're good. We're good enough. We're God's chosen people. He loves us. He cares for us. And friend, this morning, he came unto his own. Brother Dave, we doing all right over there? Yeah, can I get a couple of fellows? Why don't we help Brother Dave out? He's been dealing with after effects of coronavirus, and he's very weak and tired. Thank you, gentlemen. He's lost an awful lot of weight. Say what? There's a wheelchair in the back, Brother Sean. If you want to use that, I don't know, it might be a good idea. And it's warm in here, too. I understand that. Oh. Brother Ben, just jump in there and get him. Amen. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jacob, you want to take this? Take that. Yeah, just back so you have it. All right. I th- 
but I think he's just very weak. He's been dealing with this. You can talk to them when they get out there. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. You be praying for the Norris. Brother Stephen, why don't you... Brother, why don't you stand and ask God to bless the Nora family. Pray for Brother Dave in particular, just that the Lord would give him the strength he needs. Why don't you pray? Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for us being able to be here, Lord. Please be with Dave as he continues to battle the after effects of the coronavirus. Please be with his family. Give him strength. Help him be able to recover, Lord. Just put your hand of healing on him. Thank you for this day. Bless you to give him that strength, Lord. All right. Folks, you be praying for Brother Dave. He's lost about 40 pounds in the last six weeks, and so he's just his, his appetite is gone, and everything he tastes tastes terrible and just miserable, and so he's been struggling with that and came in this morning pretty weak, and so you, you pray for them, please. I know they'd be much appreciative. Number one this morning, to the lost, he comes as the Savior. And friend, I'd ask you this morning, have you received him? Have you received him? To the hurting, he comes as the healer. To the hurting, he comes as the healer. In First Peter, in chapter 5, and verse 7, the Bible says this, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Friend, to the hurting today, he comes as the healing balm of Gilead. He comes as the great physician. You see, there are those of you in this room today, you're saved and heaven's your home. Christ is your savior. What a blessing that is. It's a wonderful thing, folks, in times of trial and difficulty when we know what we have eternally. But that doesn't mean that we won't deal with pain. It doesn't mean that we won't deal with suffering doesn't mean that we won't go through hard times. Those are hard. Those are difficult. They're exhausting. But friend, to the hurting, to the oppressed, to the burden, he comes as the healer. But this is something that I think is so important. You see, it says he came unto his own, and his own what? You see, what I'm telling you today, you know. Christian, you're sitting there today and you're hurting. You're carrying a burden that is heavy. It's weighing you down. It's taking your energy away. You wake up every morning and you feel like you're ready to go back to bed. But here's the deal. You see, he came onto his own. He came as, as a healer. He came as, as a physician. He came as a helper. He came as a comforter. He came to give us rest. He came to give us peace. Have you received him? You say, Pastor, I have no peace. Friend, he is peace. And this is so important that to the hurting that we understand he is the healer, but he came unto his own, the Bible says, and his own received him not. Have you received him, Christian, as your healer? To the fallen, he comes as the God of the second chance. Isn't that wonderful? As the, <laughs> to the fallen, he comes as the God of the second chance. The friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 1. You know, know the story of Jonah. God looked at Jonah and said, go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, no way. All right? He went the opposite direction. He went 180 degrees the wrong way. And here's the thing, friend. You know who else has done that? You and I. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, we, we, God has told us to do something. Sometimes we say, well, well, I wish God would show me what to do. Well, he did. You just decided to go in the wrong direction. Well, thank God. In Jonah chapter 2 and verse 1, it says this. Then Jonah prayed, uh, 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 then Jonah prayed unto the Lord out of the God of the fish's belly. And the Bible says the word of the Lord came to him again the second time. Isn't that wonderful? God's word came to him a second time. I deleted that off the slide. Forgive me for that. But he came and God spoke to him again a second time. In John in chapter 21, Peter has forsaken Christ. He's cursed the name of his Savior. <laughs> and the Bible says in John chapter 21 and verse 14, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. Did you understand that? 
Three times. See, he had come to the disciples. He'd come to Peter. And he said, Peter, I am the risen Savior. Peter said, I got you. He said, I've risen from the grave. I got you. And in John chapter 21, after two times of seeing Jesus risen from the grave, you know what he said? I go a fishing. I quit. I'm done. I'm finished. And Jesus comes to him again a third time. Aren't you thankful that to the fallen, God comes to us, Christ comes to us as the God of the second chance and the third chance and the fourth? For a just man falleth seven times yet riseth up again. Isn't that a wonderful thought that he gives us those opportunities to serve him? Luke chapter 22 and verse 32, Jesus is looking at his disciples and he looks at Peter who said he never forsake him. And Jesus said, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus looked right at Peter and said, Peter, I know you're going to fall, but I've prayed for thee. Friend, what a wonderful thought that I have a God that is a God of the, the second chance. And, and today, some of you in this room, you may have fallen. You may have disappointed your God. You may have disappointed your family. You may have hurt others around you, but you have a God who will give you a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. If you're here today, if you're in the auditorium this morning, I promise you that you have a God that will help you to rise up again. We serve a God of a second chance. You see, to the fallen, Jesus comes as the God of the second chance. But I'd ask you this. Have you received him? You see, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. You see, we sit in here today and say, I know God can work in my life, but I won't receive it. I won't receive that forgiveness. I won't receive that restoration I won't receive what he has. You, you sit there and, 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 and you listen as the scriptures say that God can use you and God loves you and God cares about you and God wants to do something with your life. And then you tell God how far you've fallen. You tell God how wicked. Don't you think God knows? Man, God knows. He, he knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. If that doesn't scare you, nothing else will. I mean, God knows what's going on in your dirty little mind right now. You say, oh, I'm a wonderful Christian, hogwash, all right? Every single one of us in here have some dark moments, and we have some dark times in our life, and we fall. Oh, maybe not outwardly where everybody can see it, but we fall, and God knows we've fallen, and God knows we're struggling, and he looks down at us, and Jesus came so that I could have an opportunity to get back. I'm so thankful that when I got saved, and this is a wonderful thought, God will never cast me away. I'm always his child. I'm always his son. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me, and he comes to give me that opportunity to get back up, and he doesn't come to me and say, you wicked, godless, wicked sinner, I hate you, I despise you, I saved you, and you've disappointed me. No, he comes and says, let me help you up. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He says, I love you. I want to help you up. Let's go again, son. Let's go again, daughter. That's what he says. You see, to the fallen, he comes as the God of the second chance. But friend, today, I'd ask, have you received him? You say, oh, pastor, I'm saved. I know, but you're fallen. You've fallen. You're struggling. You're telling God how you're useless. You're telling God how you're vile. But you've forgotten one thing. It was never you that pleased God. It was Christ in you. And friend, today, to the fallen, he comes as the God of the second chance. Have you received him? I'd say this fourthly this morning to the addicted. He comes as the deliverer. You see, he came to set us free. In John in chapter 8 and verse 32, it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Man, I'm so thankful. There's no sin that can bind me as a child of God. In Luke, in chapter number four, the Spirit of God, Jesus speaking, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, fulfilling prophecies, what he's doing, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To the addicted, he comes as the deliverer. Friend, he came to set you free.
You say, Pastor, I'm saved. I know that, Christian, but he came to set you free from your sin. He came to set you free from those, those, those obvious wicked sins of, of, of drugs and alcohol and pornography and the perversion of the world, but he also came to, to deliver us from the sins that are private of, of jealousy and bitterness and, and hatred and envy. He came to deliver us from those things so that we could live a, a triumphant life. And isn't it isn't a wonderful thing that I don't have to live underneath the bondage of sin. Sin is an evil taskmaster. Hates you. Sin despises you. Satan wants to destroy, and he delights in it, by the way. You know, Christian, when you got saved, you walked out of the prison that sin had made for you. Christ came in, he wrote it as finished above the cell door, and he said, get out of here. You never have to come back again. The door is unlocked, the chains have been torn asunder, you are free, you have been set at liberty, walk and sin no more. Wonderful thought. He came unto his own. But here's what Christians do. They say, Lord, I have this sin, this weight that doth so easily beset me. And we walk back into the cell door and we close it behind us. And we go over and we put the chains on our arms and our legs and, oh, we're not shackled anymore. The cell door is no longer locked. But we live a life of addiction. We live a life of frustration. And friend, today, (laughs) to the addicted, he comes as the deliverer, the one who set us free. Aren't you thankful? It isn't my good life that sets me free. It's not my righteousness. It's not my knowledge. It's not my education that sets me free. It's Christ. Do you understand? By the way, that's why the world, that's why our country is struggling and trying to persecute religion right now. I'll tell you why. Because what Christ does is he gives liberty. It's not education. It's not a, a, a financial status. It's, it's not what, what is going on in our culture today, friend. I'll tell you this right now. What gives a man liberty is Christ. Because when you have Christ, though they may shackle your hands, they cannot shackle your soul, and you are set free by the Son of God. And though you may be in a prison in Philippi like Paul was, you can sing and glorify God at midnight and the world looks at you and wonders what is wrong and you look at them and tell them what is right. Friend, isn't that wonderful? To the addicted, he comes as the deliverer. But I would ask you, have you received him? Oh, it's a wonderful thought. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Lastly, this morning, to every child of God, he comes to us as our Lord. In John in chapter 1, in verse 43, the story of Christ continues. John proclaims that this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Later on in that same chapter, he begins to call his disciples. And I'm just going to turn your attention to one verse. But in John in chapter 1 and verse 43, it says, The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, two words, follow me. Same with me, two words. Here we go. Follow me. That's what Christ, your Savior, says to you, Christian. He says, follow me. He comes to me as a child of God and he says, I'm to be your Lord. Now, I want you to understand something. Jesus is Lord no matter whether or not I follow him or not. He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And there's going to come a day when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is unavoidable. But I will tell you something in your life right now. Christian, you have the opportunity to say, hey, hey, Jesus is my Savior, but brother, he is my Lord. Jesus said, follow me to a lot of men and to a lot of women. But there were a select few who left all and followed him. And to every child of God today, he comes to you as Lord. Psalm in chapter 37, the Bible says this, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. It's a wonderful verse. It's a wonderful verse. That says that my God will literally guide every single step that I take. Does it not? But there's something very important that I have to comprehend. 
And that is found in Proverbs in chapter 3 and verse number 5 and 6. Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall what? You see, he comes today, Christian. You say, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. I know Christ is Savior. I have eternity. I'm fine. I'm good. But today he comes and he says, follow me, John. Follow me, Tim. Follow me, Jim. Follow me, Gary. Follow me, Tristan. And here's the thing. You have the opportunity today to look up to heaven and say, here it is, God. Jesus is Lord in my life. But I want you to understand something. He came unto his own, the Bible says. Are you God's child today? Oh, yes, I am. But his own received him not. There were many that trusted him. But there were few that actually followed him. And my friend today, to every child of God in this room, Christ comes to you as Lord. And he says, follow me, son. Follow me, daughter. He says, let me guide your steps. Let the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords supreme, let me be involved in every single step you take. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But friend, if you do not acknowledge your God in all your ways and say, he is Lord, Hey, in your marriage, men, he is Lord. In your marriage, ladies, he is Lord. Hey, young people, in your relationship with the opposite gender, he is Lord. Hey, kids, with your parents, he is Lord. Parents, with your kids, he is Lord. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And Christian, this morning, I would just ask you, have you received him? Have you received him? The Bible says in John in chapter 1, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Friend, I'd ask you, have you received him? To the lost, well, he comes as our Savior. To the burdened, to the hurting, he comes as our healer. Friend, do you understand? To the addicted, and what a wonderful thing, but he comes as our deliverer. To the child of God, he comes as our Lord. Let's go ahead and stand.